Hakim Adi, the first British person of African heritage to become a professor of history in the UK, has been shortlisted for a prestigious history writing prize. It comes after he was made redundant by the University of Chichester uh, when they cut a course he founded. More recently, though, and happily, he's been shortlisted for the Wolfson History Prize, an award given to encourage standards of excellence in history writing for his 2022 book, African and Caribbean People in Britain, A History. Um, welcome, Hakim. Um, I have to say, I was really surprised, first of all, uh, just to read that you were the first British person of African heritage to become a professor of history. Um, do you find that surprising? I find it rather worrying, Mariella, I have to say. Um, one can't really celebrate uh, such a distinction. Uh, it just shows where we are in this country, um, that so few of us managed to go through the education system and reach the lofty rank of a professor that's particularly the case in in history we still have uh, too few young people of african and caribbean heritage who engage with history who become history students who become postgraduate history students who even become history teachers in schools but surely that's partly because they don't see themselves in history most of the time that's exactly right. You've, you've hit the nail on the head. This is exactly the problem, that history is too often presented in a very Eurocentric manner, whether in schools or in universities or in the media. And so there's a need to, to remedy that situation. That was one of the reasons why we started the MRES program at the University of Chichester um, five years ago, precisely to encourage more people of African and Caribbean heritage to engage with history and to train to become historians. Uh, what was the title of that course? Uh, because I, I, I wanted to ask whether it was, I mean, you know, in, in newspaper reports, they said that it, it didn't get enough attendance. I think only one person graduated uh, yes, from it. But, but is it, is, it, is, it, is it symptomatic also of a, a sort of wider undervaluing of humanities in our education? No, Ella, you can't believe everything that you read in the newspapers. You know that. Well, I know uh, you'll put me straight. So well, off you I'll go. Do my, I'll do my best. No, this, actually the students are very angry that the University of Chichester should say that only one student graduated from the course. I mean, several of those students who graduated from the Masters by research in the history of Africa and the African diaspora are now PhD students at the University of Chichester. The University of Chichester either doesn't know anything about its Masters students and its PhD students, or it's lying. I mean, there is the possibility the University of actually lying about one of their own programs. And that's even more uh, disgusting, I think. But no, we've had many graduates. In fact, uh, seven of the students who graduated from the MRES have gone on to do PhDs, most of them at the University of Chichester, one in the United States. It was a very successful course. The only, you can say, weakness of it was that the university did not promote it, did not market it sufficiently. Um, but as we've seen from the support we've had now that the university have attempted to close it, thousands of people all over the world signing a petition, writing comments, want the course because it's the only one of its kind, not just in Britain, but in but in Europe. And do you have uh, to be black to do the course? I presume No, not. you don't. Uh, you're very, very welcome. You, you would have been very, very welcome to join. Unfortunately, the university has stopped uh, recruiting students. And we had students from all over the world. Uh, we had students who definitely weren't black from this country. We had students from other countries. We had students from the US, from Canada, from the United States, from Asia. I mean, from it, it really does beg a belief in a way. And it was the only course of its kind. I mean, how much do you attribute it um, to just a lack of vision on the on the behalf of Chichester uh, University? And how much a sort of wider undervaluing of humanities in general in our education system? Or is that letting them off too easily? Well, that's probably being very diplomatic. I mean, there, there is uh, at the moment, uh, we could say a kind of general attack on humanities from the powers that be, politicians who should know better and so on. Um, these are obviously very important subjects. Actually, history is obviously about understanding the world in which we live, not just about the, the past, but the present, understanding how the world changes and our role in changing it and so on. So it's an ex extremely important subject. And it's, it's for that reason that politicians and governments often try and distort and confuse our understanding of the, the historical past. I think also there is a, 
the kind of marketization, as some people call it, of higher education, the idea that everything is about money and making as much money as possible, not providing an enlightened education for the citizens of today and tomorrow. And so the University of Chichester obviously suffers from the general underfunding of higher education in this country, as well as the peculiar mismanagement that exists at that university. There may, of course, be be more to it than that, but that's certainly those are certainly some of the problems and difficulties. Talk to me then about the vacuum when it comes to black history. I mean, I think you'll probably empathise. As a woman, uh, we also have found ourselves written out of history for, uh, well, a couple of thousand years at least. Um, and and it feels like um, this is not an issue that's being properly addressed in terms of, I mean, your your book, for example, exists to fill in those spaces, doesn't it? Yes, and that's, you, know, you again, put your finger on it, that particularly in this country, there's been a history presented from the perspective of, uh, we can say, from the white men of property. Uh, most of the people in Britain are not white men of property, and most people in the world are not white men of property. And so we want a history which includes all of us. Yes, which includes women, which includes working people, which includes people of African heritage, of Asian heritage, and so on. We want to understand the society in which we live. And so my book was necessary, we could say, because very often the history of Britain is, is written from a very narrow perspective, which excludes important sections of the population, whether that be women or working people or people of African and Caribbean heritage. So yes, that's what the book is about. It presents, if you like, British history from the perspective of those of African and Caribbean heritage. Do you think it's it's also an issue? Uh, because this is quite a wide-ranging book. I mean, I, I'm absolutely going to settle down with it next time I get a week off because it, it examines a history, uh, you know, from, from Libya, we're talking North Africa, we're talking Caribbean, we're talking... But also, uh, the, you get a sort of sense from it that African history, to some extent, or the history of... Africans in the UK is overshadowed by the story of slavery at times, which isn't to minimise at all the story of slavery, but it, but but in a way to sort of say, but there are other things as well. Yes, yeah, there are things. Sometimes, you know, people tend to minimise this, this history. You know, it's all about slavery. It's all about a certain boat that arrived in 1948. It's all about something else. And of course it isn't. It's about many things that have happened over thousands of years in this country. And we, we want people to understand the history of Britain in its entirety. You know, one of the things, for example, in the book, we I tried to emphasize a little bit is the history of anti-racism in Britain. We often are told that everyone's always uh, being critical of Britain's past, but there's a, a history of anti-racism in this country of thousands, millions of people actually standing up against slavery, something that um, people should be very proud of in this country, but it's it written out of history. Yeah. Women were involved in that campaign. Working people were involved in that campaign. Probably the biggest mass political campaign in Britain's history, but it's it's completely written out of the narrative. And of course, Africans also played a leading role in that movement. So we, we have to have a history which is about everybody, which actually helps us understand the past, but also the present. And that has to exclude it. That has to include everybody. Absolutely. Well, all very compelling reasons to read uh, your wonderful book. And good luck with the Wolfson History Prize um, as well. Um, it is called African and Caribbean People in Britain, A History. That's, it's by Hakim Adi, and you can get your hands on it now. Thank you very much indeed for joining me, Hakim.